nothing that I used as a soldier was helpful here. It hurts so bad. I'm like, this can't be normal. I need to try and find a different solution. Every bag is always too heavy. <laughs> Hi, we are Eric and Ricky. We not only walk Camino de Santiago, but we also help others in the preparation and ask them important questions. Today we'll ask, what is the most important piece of equipment for Camino de Santiago? I'm Jean, I come from Belgium, and uh, I've just finished yesterday the Camino Frances. My name is Chanel, Chanel Noss. Um, I'm from the States, originally from California, now living in Virginia. Uh, I just turned 40 on the Camino. Um, my name is Mark, I'm 27 years old. I'm from Germany, um, Hamburg in the north. Um, I did the Camino Primitivo, it's my third Camino. Um, last year I did the Camino Frances. So my name is Nicholas Tansky, I'm 22 years old. I'm from California, um, like Central Coast, and I just finished the Camino Frances from Saint Jean Pied de Port. My name is Albert Gonzalez, and uh, I started on June kid, kid, uh, 19th, 16th, something like that. And uh, I'm 58. I'll be 59 in like a week. Nothing that I used as a soldier was helpful here, other than just determination. That's the only thing. Because in the United States, as a, as a, I was a corpsman, uh, which is a, like a medic with the Marines, and then I became a medical service corps officer in the Army. It's completely different. Shoes would be number one, top of the list. Uh, I'm actually using Tiva sandals <laughs> with socks. <laughs> the socks are important, but the shoes are such a unique experience or, or a, a unique fit because everyone's feet are so different. Their feet needs are different. Like, so when, you, when I went online and found all these people like, oh, I swear by these shoes, I never had blisters, never had issues. I don't, I, I learned, because I, I went based on recommendations, I learned that it's so unique that you can't go on other people's recommendations. You have to feel what's right for yourself. Um, I have a big dream. I want to go the Appalachian Trail it's in the US, in the east side. And I was wondering maybe, can I do such a long walk for about five months. Um, it's about 3,500 kilometers. And I thought, okay, maybe I start with the Camino Frances. Uh, what is the most important part of your equipment and why? Mm. My shoes, my boots, I think, yeah. Because they are doing great work. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And the socks, I think combinations, boots and socks together, yeah. Good hiking socks. Did you have any blisters? Uh, only on the last day, with uh, the 50 kilometers day. There I had five or six blisters, but I had three days off after this, so I didn't care. <laughs> you know, I'm an old soldier. I have really long time thinking about my equipment before, gram by gram, because uh, every bag is always too heavy. <laughs> From your equipment that you had with you, all the gear, what was the most important thing? A bottle of water and, and a good hat, a good bottle of water. That was for my best friends. In some part like Meseta, I've seen people with the pets needs peace of whatever. The sun was so hot, so hard. So which part of equipment was, was your goal to, the most important? The most important is my shoes. Your shoes? Yeah. I can even be naked, but as long as I could walk, I'm okay. <laughs> um, I had these trail shoes and uh, they dry really fast, especially on the Norte and on the experience that we had. Uh, it rained. They said it was un characteristic the amount of rain that they've had in the last uh, month and a half and of course that's when we I've been on the Camino but the good thing about these shoes is that they just dry really quick um, you could slap them together you, you, you can use newspapers but you really don't even need to um, once you start walking they dry um, pretty pretty much any blisters 
Yeah, I, I had some one, one blister, but I just popped it. I didn't do the thread and needle. I just popped it, pushed it out, and then, yeah. The most important piece of your equipment? Um, my bottle of hot sauce. Because <laughs> um, that's kind of a joke, but no, I just, you know, you're eating a lot of, you're going to cafes, you're eating tortilla, bocadillos, all this stuff. So I've been carrying and buying a new bottle of hot sauce to carry around every day. Uh, footwear, um, everyone has their own opinion. I did the whole thing and my sandals, never had a blister. Um, I feel really good, my joints feel strong. They're kind of minimalistic sandals, so they mimic just walking similar to barefoot, but with some protection. And um, I saw a lot of people suffering, suffering with blisters and foot pain, and I felt blessed to not have those problems. Um, I started out with trail runners, um, some that were recommended by several people. And a um, uh, hundred miles in, when I was in Logronio, I ended up like, I was having such pain with my feet. And it was, you know, at the 10 kilometer marker every day, I'm just excruciatingly painful. Like I'm taking little steps, I, it hurts so bad. I'm like, this can't be normal. I need to try and find a different solution. So I, in, I was in a big city, Logronio, and went to an outdoor store and the gentleman behind the counter said, best shoes to do the Camino Winter sandals. And I'm like, well, I don't have many options at this point, so let's give it a try. <laughs> I definitely needed a change. Um, and for me, the sandals have been fantastic. I paired them with compression socks so that my foot doesn't slip around in the sock because you just want to make sure that you're not having any, any rubbage anywhere. My son's had, you know, your feet feel like you're on fire, especially the first the whole Camino, but uh, <laughs> but the first week is the hardest because your feet feel like they're on fire. And uh, I think the, the skin on both my son's uh, soles uh, came off, almost all of it, because of the, it was so rainy and it was wet and, you know, all the rubbing. Um, but, uh, you know, you just give that up to God and continue. Hearing those inspiring stories, you might be feeling motivated to start your Camino journey. Before you embark, consider joining us on a special retreat designed to prepare you both physically and mentally. Our retreat offers personal guidance, expert advice, and a supportive community to ensure you're ready for adventure ahead. Sign up to secure your spot and start your Camino with confidence. Click the link below to learn more and register for our pre-Camino retreat. Don't miss this opportunity to make your Camino experience truly unforgettable. And what about the backpack? I was originally going to go with like a hyper light backpack because I wanted to try to go minimum weight, totally different than backpacking. And I actually decided that uh, the structure and more support along the back was more important than trying to go extremely lightweight for me anyway. Different for everybody, I'm sure. So when my experience doing backcountry backpacking with friends, I usually go with another person at least. Um, and in doing that, uh, you know, I take a water bottle and I put my water bottle in their backpack and they put their water bottle in mine. So you have easy access because sometimes trying to reach back into your like side pockets, it's not the greatest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up going with a water bladder that I'm, I don't typically do when I go hiking but I got one insulated and I've, it's been fantastic. Um, so the hose is insulated as well as the bag. I've not had any leakage and, you know, it's just made it for easy access for my water. I feel pretty happy with my pack. Um, I made a decision to not bring rain gear. I brought one emergency poncho that was like single use and I got lucky. Like yesterday was really my only day with rain and it was warm enough to just walk through it fine. Um, I don't think that was the most responsible thing to do, but I just didn't want to deal with the space it took up. Thinking about your equipment has uh, two important ways. First, for the practice, a low way of thinking, and yeah, there is an high way of thinking too. Um, because um, gone to the essential points. When you have nothing, you are free. 
always the bag is the, um, the weight of your fears. Sometimes we said, uh, let your metals at the door of the temple. If you let all your metals you let at the door of the temples uh, make you free. I wish I brought like a, a camcorder. It's fun to take, you know, photos and videos on the phone, but something more dedicated to just filming and documenting. How heavy is your bag? Now about eight. Eight because there is my, my shoes inside. There is my uh, walking seat, uh, walking uh, stick on, but Let's it's... Try it. Try it. <sighs> it's now a little bit heavier, I suppose. Nine, nine one. Nine one. Yeah. With my shoes. Yeah, I have, I have my full camping inside, cooking sets, food, uh, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I brought a luxury item. Do you want to see? <laughs> I might have to dig for it a little bit. <laughs> my grandfather. I was very close with, um, passed somewhat recently. And he always, since I was a baby, used to call me Miss Piggy. Um, so we would always exchange and give little like piggy stuffed animals or little figurines to each other. Um, and this was the last one that I gave him when he was in the hospital um, before his passing. And afterwards, my grandma asked if, if you know, us grandkids wanted to take anything to remember him by. And this was what I decided to to take and I sleep with him every night <laughs> and I kiss him on the head and say goodnight Gramps. <laughs>